day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Good morning. Hey, I hope everybody had a great uh, Christmas. I really do. I know you did. Most of you did. Some of you did. Uh, but, the, you know, the main thing now is that the, uh, the whole reason for the season for us is to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And yes, it's not the actual day. Because we don't know the actual day of his birth. Some believe that the uh, birth was probably sometime in, in the springtime. Um, because they said that the uh, uh, the shepherd was in the field um, when he was in a manger and they came by to pick to uh, the shepherds came and worship worship him so it's, it's not as important for us concerning the exact date you know this is 2021 we talked about something over 2000 years ago um, I don't think we're going to find this, the exact date of many people that were born uh, concerning uh, birth. And especially we're talking about a, somebody born, in, it wasn't born, in, they weren't born in a hospital, right? <laughs> they were born in a manger uh, where the sheep were, right? And, and all the other animals and stuff like that. So we're, we're not going to get what we expect to get in 2021 for a birth certificate or in 18 something or something like that. No, we're talking over 2000 years ago. So, and then some of the people probably said, well, there was a pagan, uh, the 25th was a pagan festival. And then, you know, the thing about it is that when we look at it, is that a lot of things, you gotta remember when, whoop, most we gotta put, uh, put in perspective when Christianity, as Christianity was growing, uh, if you if you go back from from the gospel, we're talking starting with Jesus Christ, and then the building of his disciples, and 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 then those are others that follow around, right? Uh, and then after his death and resurrection, uh, the church grew, and about three thousand people uh, or more. And then, well, actually, on the day of Pentecost, it was one hundred twenty. Uh, but the church started growing after the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, right? So, and, and then it just grew from there, but it didn't grow into the, the, the biggest faith in this world, in this world now, keep that in mind, um, until the, uh, until we get what we got today now, 2020. So, when, so because there was a festivals, uh, they decided uh, that, okay, well, while these other crazy people, pagans and so forth, were celebrating whatever their festivities were, they decided that, well, this is a good time to do, uh, we can go ahead and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, while some may be worshiping the S-U-N or whatever, the sun, we were, we were worshiping <coughs> and recognized the birth of the S-O-N, Son of God. Amen. So we use that. That was, you know, in other words, we were too small of a group to influence the, uh, I guess, an annual festivity. What we said to do, we incorporate ourselves to do that, take that opportunity to do a worship. But at the time, and then keep in mind that uh, while those whatever the reason the background behind the the, the celebration uh, that they were celebrating they are no longer here keep that in mind in other words Christianity uh, the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ over being a small group overcame and over and overtook the reasons for the season. <laughs> I mean, that's a blessing. I think that's a very good blessing to recognize that the reason for the season changed toward the birth and recognition of Jesus Christ. 
I personally want to say because we, we needed a savior. And, and I don't know, some people believe they do need a savior, but that's okay. I need a savior. And I'm glad he came. Amen. And then the other reason we're talking about Easter, the, the, that was another annual festival. It was basically the the uh, the birthing of coming out of winter uh, to come into the spring, where harvest and everything else was starting to take root and take place. So they took that uh, time to to recognize the. the the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, even though a lot of people kept the word Easter, that's, that's another story by itself, as far as I'm concerned, because the fact is it really should be called Resurrection Sunday, right? Um, because Christ died three days, rose on the third day. And that third day is another thing to, to lead Jack that whole thing up to, right? Because it looks like he had to die on a Thursday, and then the third day would have been a Sunday. Uh, that's the only way you can add that up. So, so we jacked some things up. People jacked some things up because they wanted to, or they thought it was convenient to. You know, uh, that's man in the South. All we know is that he died on the cross, he was buried, and he rose again. And you know the whole whole purpose of our faith is that if it, if it didn't, if he didn't, then we have we have no faith, we have no we have no salvation. Uh, so that's why we have faith in that. Whether people look at it from what could that be possible? Well, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> that's important for you to know. You know, but the bottom line is that the this yesterday was the a recognition of Jesus being born into this world. Amen. And uh, that's why we celebrate. And that's the reason for the season. A gift that keeps on giving. And then for us to recognize it. And it's good. It's good. I tell you the truth. I think it's good morale <laughs> for people to to have a sense of giving, a sense of celebrating uh, and, and, and fellowship with one another as a family. Uh, those are the things. That's I mean. That's what you got to look at. No, nobody looking at it care about the roots of, of, of how something started. You know, because we know that pagan worship, see, statues, all that stuff, doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't get anything. Doesn't do anything for us. So therefore, we don't worry about that. We focus on the fact is that we we learn to give. Uh, not just a birthday, right? Because we all, we celebrate people's birthdays throughout the, throughout the year, and and that's a good thing. Most people feel good about that, don't they? <laughs> so it's a good thing to to have a, a season where there's giving, you know, and that, that goes for a whole bunch of other things too. So bottom line is, Merry Christmas, and I also wish you a Happy New Year, uh, because that's that's the next time we're going to be. We'll meet on the uh, the first of January, 2022. Amen. And that'll be another milestone in everybody's life that we we're moving. Uh, and this and the thing about it, you know, when you look at it, some people have any, some people not here. That were here uh, earlier this year, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Uh, to be able to hear and, and be here and to glorify God, because that's how I like it, to you know, continue to glorify Him. <laughs> because we know one day it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be in all things. But we're here because we have a, we all of us, every last one of the person who ever listened to this, we're here because of Jesus Christ. We're here because God created the creation created us to be here and uh we're here to worship and praise god and continue to do the things we're going to do hopefully we we'll go out there and uh make our own world better as well as make life i mean going out into the stars too i know some people don't go ahead but I, i'll do that anyway amen <laughs> anyway i want to sit there and say once again uh merry christmas and, and uh i hope you have a happy new year all right let's pray Dear Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come and worship and praise your holy name. You said, when two or three got in your name, you've been in the midst of them. 
I now invite you to see the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide in all truth. Father, move me out of the way that the Holy Spirit have his way as we do that which is something in my sight. Thank you for bringing Jesus Christ into our life. Thank you that you ordained that from the beginning that we will send a Savior, glory to God, for all mankind. Thank you because he has connected us back to you. And that's the blessing that we, we, we look at. And so therefore, Father, continue to lead us, guide us on truth, continue to bless, bless us and protect us as we continue to worship and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, man. Amen, amen. I think, I think the biggest thing that what I saw as a pattern of, of this, uh, the stuff we talked about earlier, or at least what I've been talking about, alluding to, is one key factor that show, has shown throughout our time in, in the Christian church, even in Islam as well, is the enforcement, even the Jewish people, the trying to, to have a faith based on laws, legalism. And it, it's, it's really the, the root behind the whole thing that we see even today. When people be, that's what they call religious people, when it becomes so legalistic that we, come, we hate somebody if they don't line up with the laws. You remember, and you remember Galatians said, who be with you? Yeah. you to go yeah, back yeah, that yeah. way. And, yeah. and one of the biggest things if regardless of how people try to use excuses and justifications for oppressing or killing people. I mean, what, 1944, 45, we talked about the liberation of the, of the Jewish camps and, and we saw the atrocities that, how far man will go. To, to to abuse somebody, right? And and then when I looked at the Spanish Inquisition, I didn't know it, but when I was reading behind it, uh, it was get baptized or die. It, it was it was by way or the highway, you know. And they did it, and and that's why even the people that came to this country was escape that type of faith. Yeah. But it was that, that, that's what a whole a whole lot of nations. Yeah. Their escape was to come here to where freedom of religion was yeah. allowed. It was almost like with the United States was like we're gonna entice all these other countries. You know, by bringing in their rejected people. Uh-huh. And they uh-huh. Yeah. So we'll have uh, knowledge about how their inner workings are. You know, it, but you, you, you can you can think of so many different things to 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 uh, dive in and start doing research on. But to me, what what is being edified? Well, the thing I think I think the key to it is the edify, edification. Truly, is you got to remember as we're ministering to those who don't know Christ, mm-hmm. and then those who are supposed to be equipped to do the work of the ministry, mm-hmm. is that we have this bewitchment of trying to do things by the law and and and, and show anger. And matter of fact, what I wanted to show today to 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 kind of lay in that this is what we got to watch out for is the the message in Luke dealing with the prodigal son I want to mm-hmm. read that and that, that's 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 what I want to go through and because you know I'm, I'm letting everybody know just to, I guess to get to the point is I'm interested in the reaction of the oldest son but and what we want to be is show people the gospel is the father desire to bring his child back to his environment, you know, back into his kingdom. Because we know that father represents God. And then we talk about these two sons. To me, they represent the the. New Testament and Old Testament, 
is how I look at it. But the problem is that the, the, the danger of Christianity is to fall back into the trap of the law. And, and that's what we see happen today in this world is when we, when, because that's what people look at. They look at, you know, when you're trying to give the gospel, they're still looking at uh, the whole body as, as a whole. And they'll tell you, I think you probably see it, when some people leave, they leave to church because of this my way or the highway, this, 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 this. They, they leave the doctrine of the gospel because that's what it was to preach the gospel you know mm -hmm. what i mean but but a lot of people that leave they're not getting the gospel yeah it's like i was like, like i mentioned you know you 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 you, you find this this light you know this lamp in, in darkness that's lit up and it's drawing you in and you draw to it and kind of find out that there's there's people blocking that light. Yeah. You know, they're 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 putting fences up and they're trying to give you a reflection. Yeah. A mirror reflection of that light, which is not the light. Yeah. So you know that they're, they're not giving you the light, they're giving you uh uh just an imitation of it and, and it's really not even the light. It's it's that person. It's that person. So, they're drawing you back to the schoolmaster, is yeah. what I'm saying. And the yeah. same thing that caused the fall of the Jewish people is that they tried to be legalistic. Yeah. Then they and tried it, to, they wanted to be like other folks, you know, in the world. Yeah. They, they tried to, to, to they, they were uh, covetous of, of their lifestyle. You know, and what they had, and, and, and the way they live, and Woo. So it and it, a, it, wow, it's just, it's just a it's, it's 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 a pattern that enemies like to suck people back into. That's the whole point. Yeah. And, and, and tell you the truth, legalism brings in questioning your salvation, right? Because that's what oh. he did with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> He did it, he did it uh, to Adam and Eve. Did God say, what, what do you mean? Opposed to saying, you know, God said you don't eat of that tree. Yeah. No, you're you you, you going to say he did. You make it a question. Mm -hmm. and, and, and see, legalism, make it a question of your salvation. <laughs> and the problem is it doesn't line up with what the gospel is called, right? The gospel is to bring them in. The, the good news is, the, hey, look, hey, the gospel is that regardless of what you have done, Christ died for that. You know what I mean? I mean, we, but to, it's, it's, it's like ironic. I bring you in because that's what the gospel says. And now I want to sit there and put you back on the law. And that's what we got to make sure people understand. You don't, there's a liberty, there's a grace that comes with the gospel. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what's on the mind is <clears throat> a lot of people try to they try to 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 take on the form of God. Yeah. And and administer wrath <laughs> in his stead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's not for us to do that. No. Nope. You know, uh, God's wrath is against ungodly. So exactly. if you're trying to be godly and administering wrath, which is not of God, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, not for us to, to, to do something that is not, we haven't given permission to do, mm -hmm. that means you're, you're, You, you've been bewitched. Yes, that's so, the whole point. Because we know that it's only ungodliness and unrighteousness that God 
is is awful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's what he's trying to 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 administer wrath to. Yeah. And there is a point in time when that will take place. When the fullness of time, mm -hmm. his wrath will be expelled through our lack right. of belief. Not because he did not give us an opportunity to 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 uh to remove ourselves from that situation. Right. He provided an escape. He he gave his son um, to, to endure what we were expected to endure exactly. with the mind of bringing us back in. And right. then those who just refuse to accept that that gift that awesome good that I just can't even how, how can you even put it into a quantitative measurement for our understanding to what Christ has done and to what God did for us and then to take that and to just to stop on it and 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 expect anything other than to be separated from God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what 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 is no different than what, what you were saying. The uh the the prodigal son. Yeah. You know, he he took what his father gave him and just abused it. Yeah. You know, he had no no he had no plans to keep the life that his father had prepared for him, he wanted a life of this world. Uh, we thought where we think that of what the world, right? It seems like it's an illusion about uh, what the world offers us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it offers nothing. It just sucks what you have, and it consumes what you have. Yeah, it gives you back nothing. Yeah. There is no, <laughs> there is no source outside of the source that you have been given. Yeah. So it consumes all of your resources and does not give back to that because it, it doesn't, it doesn't own it. It doesn't, it can't produce it. 